Welcome back to another Charger video. I've got the Sky RC MC3000 in to look at today. And what I'm going to do is, whilst I'm showing you some of the items on screen, give you an overview of this unboxing. And then I'll talk a little bit later on about the operation. I've tried to keep it reasonable length because this is a pretty complicated charger. And that's reflected in the user guide, which I'm showing you there. I'll put links down below to that. It's probably a bit more intimidating than it actually is in reality. So we get straight on to the unboxing. And I'll try and show you as much as I can without making it a feature length documentary, which you could easily do on a charger like this. There's the charging brick and it's pretty substantial. Total length is around 2.4 meters. That includes the power cable. And that's the reason why we can get that fast charging speed is because we've got a pretty meaty power supply so I put most of the key specs on screen for you this charger can do pretty much everything it's the Mr. Spock of chargers for want of a better word and looking at the unit it is quite a solid plastic on this though I found the rails to be quite stiff to be honest when I first unboxed it I'll get onto that a bit later on it definitely has a bit of an 80s vibe to it with the boxy look even down to the dot matrix display which works pretty well actually to be honest but I mean there are a lot of different ways you could make a charge like this length of the slots on this is 73 millimeters which means to say that you're going to fit most batteries in there but not the protected 20 or 21 700 cells give you a few close-up shots so you can see now they're quite tall the rails on this the contact points on them and that's due to the larger batteries you'll be able to fit a couple of big ones on the outside and they also change the contact points at the top they're now raised and those metal strips inside in the base that's the temperature sensors have quite a big aluminium block heat sink in there with the grills so that it will adequately cool and I'll show you a side profile nothing to see on that side there's your input voltage. You can use a solar panel with this in that voltage range. PC link, USB output and Bluetooth on the side is an LED. The output on that isn't a power bank. It's just a pass through from the main power supply. On the underside, this has changed from the original. They've added two fans to the top. The original just had a single one. And for some reason, though, one fan tends to come on, at least in medium levels. Sometimes a second one will kick in. The feet pop out on this and they're pretty secure as are the plastics on the whole of the body it does feel pretty robust and that gives you a bit more of an angle if you've got it up but even if you don't there's enough clearance with the rubber feet that they have included they're quite tall so you shouldn't have any ventilation issues what I did with the rails is I greased them up with silicone grease and there was a big improvement on that it's just something which should have been done at the factory uh, perhaps it was a bit of an oversight but they're much smoother now that I put that grease on and it's of course non-conductive as well the 21700 seal that I've got here a little bit of a tight fit but it does fit in and I've got some variety of different batteries that you can put in if you're using the bigger CD cells put them on the outer bay as far as most batteries fitting into this without a problem the only thing I noticed occasionally is something like a AAA just might need to push it down a little bit more to get contact on that Otherwise, though, once I greased that up, it was much easier to use. Here's a protected 21700 cell, and unfortunately, we can't fit this into the charger. It needs about another three or four millimeters just to give a bit of extra clearance. Slightly disappointed on that because it has been revised the hardware, so it'd be nice if they could have uh, made those slots a little bit longer. Here's the boot up sequence just to show you the display a bit up close and it's perfectly fine the display it's not super high resolution the good news is you do get information on all four of the channels at the same time and what I'll do now is show you the setup menu and some of the options in there I'll try and cover the main areas of the setup menu and your UI mode dummy simple and advanced the dummy lets you do basic charging and adjust the current the simple is somewhere in between gives you a few more options and the advanced gives you the full settings on everything and you can see you can actually adjust the dummy charge or the default charging on the unit that's 700 milliamps out of the box but what you can do is just pick the rate that you want to have the default charging and that is a pretty useful feature to have one thing to note with this is you need to press the enter button once you've finished 
changing a setting the up and SNB is the slot number button so that's up or down gives you shortcuts to programs that you have stored on the charger and various other options allowing you to save to single or all of the slots things like system sound can be turned on and off and I will do a little sound demonstration later on so you can hear the sound of the buttons they are quite clicky backlit display on or off I would just leave that on auto and you can adjust the contrast if you want to you have full control over the fans you can either have them on all the time or you can have them kick in at a certain temperature indeed you can even change the temperature Celsius to Fahrenheit if you want generally speaking I leave the fans on auto I found that works pretty well good balance between cooling and noise there's your Bluetooth you can adjust the input voltage there's also a factory and a calibration reset I'll just show you the dummy now charging and this works pretty well as soon as I put a cell in it's going to see whether it's lithium ion or nickel metahydride then you can push up and down on the arrow buttons to change the charging current if you want to the default as I said earlier you can change that yourself so that you don't necessarily have to change that all the time and then you just press the enter button and that's it pretty simple I'm glad that they did include it although you do have to press a button to start charging and you'll see the LEDs at the top in the battery slots red charging green is finished and it will flash red and green if it needs some attention there is a cheat sheet which I'll include later on and it does give you really useful hints on the operation of this it's not too bad with the dummy UI you'll pick that up very easily very simple when you get into the UI advanced it's very different when you put a battery in it asks you for a program so what you need to do is push the slot number and then you'll get into all of the options and these are going to vary a little bit depending on the type of battery that you have and you can pick the chemistry whether you're charging discharging there's also a refresh mode and if you're using nicomet hydride you have an option to do a break-in mode the settings vary depending on the chemistry of the battery but you're going to have full control over everything and that includes the termination the termination current with this charge you can also specify how much current it puts into a battery and it will stop at that so at the minute it was at 2000 I've changed that do watch that setting though because you could undercharge cells if you've uh, set that too low and you didn't want to do that it perhaps looks a little bit more complicated than it is it's fairly self-explanatory in terms of the settings on this and you might not need to change all of them D current is discharge current for example this is definitely a charger where you do want to read the manual and it is quite good leaving aside a few slightly comical translations at the end it does tell you everything you need to know but it is going to take a while to set up these programs it did initially have some on it but when I updated the firmware it sort of blanked them out but you'd need to go in and change them anyway even down to things like the resting time cycle counts you have control over everything you could possibly imagine but it is going to take a while to do that and the downside is you can't rename the programs so for example if you're doing a discharge test you can't sort of change the text on that to show it and also you're going to need to set up probably quite a few different ones for different sizes of batteries because obviously uh, larger cells can take a bigger charge current or discharge current than smaller ones so it's not particularly user friendly that side of the charger because simply because of the time it's going to take but you do have your options here for the temperature as well there's a lot of safety features with this uh, you can also set it to turn off at a specific time however many minutes that you've put it to or you can turn some of these features off whether or not you need all of these features I see what they're doing with this they're trying to cover every possible conceivable setting that you might want to change so it's down to yourself to determine whether you want to just pay attention to things like the timer because you could set it too low and accidentally not fully charge or complete the cycle so it's not super user friendly particularly in terms of using the advanced UI you probably get used to it but you'll need to probably write them down there's the graph that you can have come up on the screen again it's not super high resolution but it does show you the voltage and that does rescale now as far as my overall thoughts with this this is more of a hands-on and I'm still using it 
So later on, I'll do that video on the app and the PC software. My general thinking is it's easier to use the phone to set programs and just activate those. And I'll show you that in a later video that I'll do rather than programming the unit, which is going to take a bit longer to do and it's less user friendly. What I'll do is put the cheat sheet up on screen for you and the only difference with this and previous versions is to get to the graph you just long press up or down rather than tapping it. If you've got any thoughts on this charger do drop a comment below. I am using it on a regular basis and what I'll do is later on I'll make that video on the app and the PC Link software.